Hi, my name is John Yates. I'm the president and an instructor at Faith Bible Institute. And I would like to invite you to join with tens of thousands of Christians in hundreds of churches in countries around the world for an incredible, life-changing journey to the world's most exciting book, the Bible, the very words of God Himself, a book that reveals the history of the world in advance. This is semester six, one of the favorites of all of our students. As this semester, we will learn more about Bible prophecy than any other time in our three-year journey through the Word of God. This semester in Old Testament, we begin with the Old Testament books of Daniel and Ezekiel that give us the foundation for understanding all of Bible prophecy. First, in Daniel, we will learn of courage and character and conviction as we see lion's dens and fiery furnaces. And then we will examine the great prophecies of the dream image of Nebuchadnezzar and Daniel's four beasts that outline the history of the world in advance. Then we will study Daniel's 70 weeks prophecy that tells the exact day upon which Jesus Christ would present Himself as the Messiah to the nation of Israel at His first coming. Then this prophecy also describes great details about the Antichrist and His covenant of peace with Israel that begins the seven-year tribulation. We will also study the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, the most flamboyant of all of the Old Testament prophets, who acted out his prophecies in amazing ways, such as slashing about with the sword when he spoke of the judgment of God. Then in Ezekiel chapter 1, we see the amazing unveiling of the angelic cherubim, those flaming uh, bearers of the chariot of God. Then we will look at the restoration of Israel as a nation that took place in 1940 from Ezekiel's prophecies. We will then examine World War III, the Russian invasion of Israel that takes place when a Russian Islamic invasion comes against God's people in the last days. And then in the book of Ezra, we will examine the story of the rebuilding of the Jewish temple and the restoration of God's people back to the promised land. In Nehemiah, we will learn of the rebuilding of the wall and we will study the greatest leadership manual ever written. In Esther, we will see God's work behind the scenes in rescuing Israel from a Persian Hitler. Then in Haggai, we will see the story and the principles of revival in putting God's house first before your own. Then in Zechariah, we will study what many call the Old Testament book of Revelation, as it gives us incredible details about the judgments of the tribulation not given in that famous New Testament book. Then we will study Malachi, the final voice of Old Testament revival. In New Testament this semester, in 1 John, you will learn how to have an absolute assurance of your salvation and how to discover a new new depth to your relationship with Jesus Christ. In 2 John, we will learn of the dangers of false teachers and false teachings. And in 3 John, the danger of trying any of us trying to run one of the Lord's local churches. Then we will study that great book of Revelation itself. We will learn of the seven letters to the seven churches that outline the history of the church age. Then we will study the rapture and we will learn the meaning of the seven sealed book that is actually the redemption scroll for planet earth. When this book is opened, it contains all the judgments of the tribulation, including the seven seal judgments, the seven trumpet judgments, the seven vile judgments, as well as the events concerning the Antichrist, the false prophet, the one world government and the one world church, and the mark of the beast. The tribulation then ends in Revelation with the battle of Armageddon and the second coming of Jesus Christ. This book then uh, prophesies for us the events of the millennial reign and the eternal reign of Jesus Christ. And then in theology this semester, we will study the greatest doctrine of all, the doctrine of Christ. And you will learn to love your Savior more as we study His deity, His names, His incarnation, His humanity, and of course, 
His death for you and me on the cross of Calvary. How that He was laid into an empty tomb and how on the third day that stone was rolled away and Christ came out victorious over death, hell, and the grave. We will then see His ascension and His return and His eternal reign. And then finally this semester, we will study the doctrine of sin. And you will learn how to live in total victory over that great enemy as we learn sin's origin its nature, its destructive power, and the secrets, the great secrets to walk in victory over sin in our own lives. As I said, it's a favorite semester. I hope that you'll enroll, and I can't wait to see you in class. Good morning and welcome to Maysville Baptist Church. We are so glad that you came to worship with us today. My name is Tori Smith. I'm the Community Outreach Director here. Um, we want to welcome any first time guests that are here today. Uh, there should be a QR code on the back of the seat in front of you. Um, we would love for you to follow that link and fill out the connect card so that our pastor can be praying for you and for your family and any needs that you may have. There are a few announcements that I'd like to share with you this morning. Uh, first of all, next week, April the 14th, following the 11 o'clock service we are going to be having a informational lunch downstairs in the fellowship hall for our fam ministry fam is our family advocacy ministry and if you've never heard of that before then we want you to come be a part of that we want to give some information to our church about what we're doing and um, how we are uh, just helping those who are dealing with foster and adoption and everyone can do something so come find out what your something is next sunday following the 11 o'clock service Next, we are having a college and career night of worship on April the 20th at 6.30 p.m. in the sanctuary right here. Uh, we'll be having a night of worship for anyone who is in the age group of college and career. So uh, come join us that night. It'll be a great time together. One last thing, our graduation recognition service is coming up May the 5th. Um, so if you're graduating from high school or college, uh, please fill out the form um, so that you can be recognized May the 5th, no later than April the 28th. So that's coming up. Go ahead and get that form filled out um, and you will be ready to go. For any additional information or if you have any questions, please see our website, maysvillebaptist.net or tune into our newsletter, um, the NBC News. And if you need to be on that, just contact the church office and we can get that to you. We're so glad you chose to join us this morning. Now let's prepare our hearts for worship and take out our Bibles. Good morning, church. I'm Chris Holloway. I'm one of your deacons here at the church, and I get the privilege to bring the um, call to worship this morning. So if you will, uh, please open your Bibles to Psalm 150. We're going to read the whole uh, chapter, and once you find your place, please stand. Psalm 150. It says, Praise the Lord. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the lute and the harp. Praise Him with the tremble and dance. Praise Him in, with string, stringed instruments and flutes. Praise Him with loud cymbals. Praise Him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Then, Father, we just thank you for our many, many blessings, dear Lord. Thank you for this beautiful day you've given us. Dear Lord, as we are uh, about to start worship, I ask you to open our eyes and open our hearts to what you want us to hear this morning, dear Lord. Um, be with the pastor today as he brings the word um, from your holy word, dear Lord, that you want us to hear. Um, be with each and every one that's here. Be with all the ones that couldn't make it um, for sickness or what it may be, dear Lord. And uh, as we start worship, I ask you to be with Lee and the choir and the band is that they bring the word that you want us to hear through praise and worship. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Amen. Just remain standing and let's let everything that has breath praise the Lord this morning. Let's sing together this old hymn. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. To the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul. 
So praise Him for He is my help and salvation. All ye who hear now to His temple draw near. Praise Him in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord.
Well, amen. I'm so grateful for those good hymns. They teach such great theology. I think about that past of scripture where the Bible says, I'll never, God said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He'll be with us till the end. And to God be the glory for that. Well, this is a great spring break Sunday morning, 930 crowd. I am so grateful that you're here today. Y'all must have ran out of money last week and didn't get to go to the beach. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I, God bless you guys so very much for being here. I want to praise God. Thank you so much for your giving to the uh, Annie Armstrong Easter offering. Uh, we exceeded our goal that we had, and thank you for just being so faithful to that. I'm grateful for your faithfulness. I also wanted to remind you uh, today that uh, yesterday, when Jeff Gillum had his memorial service up in Cornish, Maine, uh, Brother David and Miss Donna flew up there to do that uh, for Beverly and their family. And uh, five people received Jesus Christ as their Savior. So we praise the Lord for that. Amen. So grateful. I know David and Donna are watching online. He's already sent me a message. Thank you, dear brother, for sacrificing and going. And uh, so grateful for that uh, wonderful report that five folks got saved. They had a snowstorm up in Maine. They had to fly into a snowstorm. Got to New York. There's an earthquake. I mean, it really was a, a very adventurous trip. And uh, we are so grateful uh, for David and Donna being able to do that. Also wanted to remind you, Brother Ray Petty, a dear, precious saint, uh, here at Maysville Baptist Church, went home to be with the Lord this week. And his funeral will be tomorrow at Little and Ward. And the funeral, the visitation will be from 1 to 3. And the service will be at 3 at Little Ward. So just wanted to remind you of that and ask you to be praying for Miss Bonnie and also for the family. Uh, I wanted to also say last week, being Easter Sunday, uh, we had one person receive Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord, and we just want to rejoice over that as well. <laughs> Praise the Lord for that. She will be baptized at 11 at the 11 o'clock hour, so very grateful uh, for her surrender. I wanted to pause just a minute and show you another video. I know we showed a, a very long video at the beginning of the service. We wanted to introduce you to John Yates, uh, who is the Faith Bible Institute instructor, and uh, great guy, loves the Lord with all of his heart. There's an elective and that you're able to participate in. That summer elective is called Creationism. Creationism versus evolution. The enrollment ends on April the 30th, and it, the the classes actually start on Thursday, May the thir excuse me Thursday, May the 30th. So, enrollment ends April 30th. Class starts May the 30th. Also, fall semester, semester number six has open enrollment now until June the 30th. And that starts on August the 15th. So if you're looking for uh, uh, basically an associate's degree, if you will, uh, in uh, Bible, this is a great place to get it right here at Maysville Baptist Church. And uh, it'll, you'll be uh, blessed by that. But I wanted to show you a little video about our shoe distribution that we were able to do. And uh, so grateful for, we have some, a lot of Christian businesses, not only in our church, but outside the church that says we want to be involved in some eternal investments and they give to certain projects along with your giving when you give a portion of your giving goes to some of these projects but I wanted to show you a project we just finished up at Maysville Elementary could I call your attention to the screens and if we could let's play the video for the shoes and then I'll be back and we want to greet each other but check this video out
So church, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness. It's through your faithfulness that we're able to do things like this and uh, other Christian businesses that hear what's going on here at Maysville and say, hey, can we make an eternal investment in some of these projects? And uh, absolutely, you sure can. And I'm just so grateful. If you'd like to be involved physically in distributing some of these things in the future, you want to be a part of a project like that, if you'll just come see me or also if you'll uh, c come see Sister Tori. Where are you at, Tori? If you'll see Sister Tori, she'll be glad to put your name down and we'll uh, continue. As long as the Lord gives us resources, we want to be a blessing to our community and to the children of our community and we're coming up with new ideas and different things to be able to help our community and love on our children uh, but that that totaled about probably just over 400 pairs of shoes is how many we were able to give away and so again I want to say thank you for that also want to say thank you to our guests we're delighted that you're with us today and what I'd like for us to do is find them and welcome them to Maysville could we all stand up at this time find two or three people and welcome them to Maysville Baptist Church it's good to have you here today
morning. I know this has kind of been the morning for videos this morning, but uh, I just wanted to take a couple of opportunities, if I could, to, to share with you just some things that are going on here at Maysville and give you an opportunity to participate. One of the things that we were able to do, and we've been doing uh, social ministries for a long time, just trying to let the church be the church, but a couple of years ago we formed what's called the FAM ministry, and the FAM ministry is the Family Advocacy Ministry. And the Family Advocacy Ministry at Maysville Baptist Church was formed to reach foster and adoptive families, both in our church and in our community. I wanted to stop just a minute, and you'll have to excuse me, gentlemen. I'll try to help next time uh, let you guys come down. But if you don't mind sitting down just for a minute, I wanted to show the church a video about the FAM Ministry, if I could. So if we could cue that up, and let's go ahead and show that video uh, first, just before we pray for the offering. over a year now. I am now part of the FAM ministry. Hey, my name is Tori Smith. Um, I'm the community outreach director here at Maysville, um, and I am a family advocate here in our FAM ministry. Hi, I'm Lee Cox, and uh, I'm a member here at Maysville, and I am the uh, founder, I guess, of the uh, ministry here. We do a lot of different things for the family. One of them is taking a meal once a month. Other things could be um, sending them a birthday cake or attending a sport event. And the main thing um, that the church can do to help families that are adopting or are fostering is just to offer support. And that might look different for different families. You can always pray for them too. And, oh yeah, uh, that's that, true. Uh, everybody can do that. Hello. My name is Holly Lord. My husband is David and we have two children, Kyle and Naomi. Um, it started back in 2006 when um, we adopted our son privately. A few years later, we started um, doing foster care. We actually had um, three children, um, the last one being Naomi. And we, um, as you know, ended up adopting her when she was three. There are thousands of kids in the foster and adoptive system, and there are hundreds of homes to put them in. 50% of new foster homes are closed within the first year. We need to find a way to support them. One of the things we notice with these care teams is that a foster family with a care team 90% of them are still open after two years. And so that's a great improvement if we can keep the people who are interested in serving and keep them to where they can. That is what the church is good at, is surrounding people and giving them love, giving them community and serving them. If we can do that, we can make foster fostering a viable option. Um, serving these families have impacted um, myself and my family. Um, by wanting to reach out and help other families as well as it's now made us decide to go out and adopt kids of our own. Our mission here at Maysville is to love God, love others, and serve the world. And I truly believe that this FAM ministry um, exemplifies that um, in all aspects. If you are interested in being involved in the FAM ministry, this is something that you're interested in being a part of, you say, man, that... That really sounds like something I'd like to get involved in. There's going to be an informational lunch next Sunday, and they'll be telling you a little bit more how you can be involved in that. If you're interested in attending that lunch, if you will contact Miss Tory, just call the church here, ask to speak to Miss Tory. She'll be glad to RSVP you. Lunch will be provided. It didn't cost you a dime, but it'll give you an opportunity to find more about the FAM ministry, how you can be involved. Now, before we uh, take up the offering, I want to introduce our special guest speaker the, today. Uh, I asked Brother Sammy Simmons many uh, months ago if he would speak today and give his pastor a little bit of a break, and he said, yes, he'd be glad to do that. And so I, I, he really needs no introduction because he's a member here, but you may have never seen him before, and there's a good reason why. As a member here at Maysville Baptist Church, Sammy is also the National Project Director for Sin Relief in the North American Mission Board. Uh, he has served as 10 years as pastor of Emmanuel Baptist Church in Benton, Illinois, and two years as the president of the Illinois Baptist State Association. He's married to Michelle. They have two children. Uh, one, the first one, Jay, he's at Georgia Tech, 
And then the second one, Sarah Grace, who is also uh, in, in, she's in high school, and she is uh, at Commerce, and she plays in our uh, orchestra as well. And I've asked him to come preach today, and I just want to tell Sammy how grateful I am. We were able to partner with him in Augusta, did a fantastic job. Church, thank you so much again for showing up on that. Uh, but Sammy's all over the United States and around the world as he's hosting these sin relief opportunities. Would you help me thank Sammy Simmons for all he does for the church? Sammy, we love you. Very, very grateful for you. Let me pray, and then after I pray, Zach, I believe, are you and Allison singing today? Praise the Lord. I'm going to invite Zach and Allison to come, and they're going to, you're going to be blessed by this. Sammy, when they're done singing, will you please share what the Lord's put on your heart? Father, I want to thank you again for this day. Thank you for the faithfulness of Maysville Baptist Church. Lord, I, I pray that you'd be that with the offering, the gift, and the giver. And Lord, as we give back to you what you've been so gracious to give to us, Lord, I pray, Lord, that we would use it for the furtherance of your kingdom as we continue to love you, love others, and serve the world. Lord, I pray for Zach and Allison now as they come. Lord, may this song prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. And Lord, I pray that if there's someone that doesn't know the free pardon of sin, that today would be the day they receive Christ as Savior. We love you, and we thank you for our time together. We pray your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to share another song with you guys that I wrote. <laughs> I wrote this song based on uh, Matthew chapter 14, where Peter steps out of the boat, walks on the water, and then takes his eyes off Christ and starts to sink. Um, this, this story really ministered to me in a very dark time in my own life because uh, the, I realized that Jesus has sympathy on our weakness. Isn't that good? When your faith won't keep your head above water, the hand of Jesus will. So I sing this whole song from the perspective of Peter, and I pray it's a blessing to you this morning. Yesterday I saw the thousands fed, and my faith was sure. My place there by your side was so secure. But tonight I fight with questions I've never asked before. And the doubt that floods my heart, I can't ignore. I've never quit, but I'm on the brink. As my eyes leave me, I start to sink. Lord, I'm not a swim. Can you deliver me from all the doubt my mind now entertains? I need your sympathy, cause if it depends on me, my last breath is just another gasp away. Lord, save me, please save me, is all I know to say. All night long I've tried to drive this ship Faithful to the course But the wind and waves just won't obey my voice If that's a you that I see coming Let me step out of this place I chance my life just to see your face I've never quit But I'm on the brink start to sink Lord I'm not a swimmer can you deliver me from all the doubt my mind now entertains I need your sympathy cause if it depends on me my last breath is just another gasp away but your hand of mercy out of reach and my lack of faith in pain is no surprise to you I find your sympathy it never depends on me when my last
last breath is just another gasp away. Lord, save me. Please save me. Is all I have to say. Lord, save me. Please save me. Is all I have to say. Is all I have to say. morning. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I have struggled throughout my life, rightfully understanding what it means to be a missionary, uh, God's call to missions, and how God wants to use me. I've struggled at different times, Lord, how can you use me? Um, man, I graduated from Commerce High School, I'm not sure what that says about me, or, um, but I graduated from this area, uh, went off to school, and as at college, I felt like God was calling me to ministry, so I said, yes, Lord, uh, went out to, to seminary in Texas and was there pastoring. Uh, my wife and I got married uh, there pastoring in a little small town in Texas. remember calling in an IMB missionary to come and share with us about how God was moving among the nations. It was an IMB missionary and one of the former uh, Soviet Union. Um, he was there sharing. and I think I had a, a man crush on the missionary. I kept going on and on about how cool it was. He was a missionary, how cool God was using him and just... Well, I, I, you know, just, I was just on and on about, man, how cool it is that, you know, he's a missionary. And finally, in our conversation, he said, stop. Don't you know I'm just a normal person like you are? And I think what I had wrongfully thought, I had this, like, missionaries are super elite people. Like, one day, if I could grow up, I could be, you know, like, you know, at this level, then this level, then this is a level. Can I ever make missionary? That's super elite people. And I had this, like, missions crush on missionaries. And I wrongly understood what, who missions was for. You know, the truth is, if you are a believer today, God has called us all to be missionaries. Amen. We are all called by the Lord, and God wants to use every single one of us. So let's look at what is our missionary call. If you have a copy of God's Word, we open it with me to 1 John chapter 3, and we'll start today in verse 11. 1 John chapter 3, verse 11. Here's what God's Word says. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Unlike Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his deeds were evil and his brothers were righteous. Don't be surprised, brothers and sisters, if this world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. The one who does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. Verse 16, this is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. We should also lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has this world's goods and sees a fellow believer in need, but withholds compassion from him, how can God's love reside in him? Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. Our text this morning, I think, addresses part of what our missionary call looks like. We could see other parts of our missionary call in Matthew 28 or Acts 1-8 or Matthew 25. But when we look at Scripture, I think we see this resounding over and over. We are missionaries called to meet needs and share the gospel in Jesus' name. If you know Jesus as your Savior, if you have been saved, if you have went from death to eternal life, you are a missionary called to meet needs and share the gospel in Jesus' name. We see that in verse 16. The second half says, uh, we should lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. I mean, here's the, the call for us to sacrifice for others' needs. Now, our text this morning really is addressing, as it talks about brothers and sisters, how we should treat each other in the church. 
Now, before we limit it, so what about people at First Baptist? Do we have to treat them? No, 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 no. Don't limit it. I think Scripture expands to how we treat all believers. And before we restrict it just to believers, we see um, when someone asks Jesus, who is our neighbor? And Jesus expands it. I believe that this text is applicable not just for how we treat believers, but how we treat our lost community and other individuals. Now, notice who missions is for. We see that in verse 18. We see this call to mission on verse 17. It is not if you are a super saint, then you are called to missions. Notice it's not what your text says. Notice if you have been to seminary, it's not in there. If you are at least 55 years old, it's not in there. If you have been a Christian at least 10 years, it's not in there. If you know all the answers, it's not in there. If at least you didn't go to Banks County, it's not in there. We okay? It, notice it's not in there. If you have free time and you're retired, it's not in there. Notice what it does say. Little children, verse 18. New believers. People who are still growing in their faith. Is that you? Notice what it says in, in verse 17. If anyone... Now, I lived 10 years in Illinois, so let me speak well, the way Illinoisans speak. If you guys, if you ins, if y'all, if you. Notice here the text here. If God has saved you, he has left you on this earth for a reason. He has left you here for a reason. God has a plan and purpose for every one of our lives. Ever thought the reason God, God gave you the job that you have, the reason that God gave you the house that you have, the reason God that gave you the crazy family that you have is that no elbow in your spouse there. The reason God gave you those things is because God wants a missionary there and he put you there. See, I firmly believe that God has called every one of us to be mobilized missionaries and God wants to use every one of us. And I just want to walk through the text backwards. Look with me, Will, at verse 18. Little children, let us not love in word or speech, but in action and in truth. See, God's call on each one of our lives is to demonstrate his love to others. So let's not live a life of all talk. Talk is cheap. There's a lot of churches that all they do is talk. There's a lot of Christians that all they do is talk. God has not called us just to talk a good game. God has called us to demonstrate his love to a lost and dying world. God calls us to a life of action, a life of service, a life of truth. And before anyone misunderstands me, we live in a world today that wrongly thinks to demonstrate love means to accept anything and everything. And our world today says, well, if you call adultery wrong, it's not loving. If you call gossip wrong, it's not loving. If if you call... um, Lying wrong, it's not loving. And I would say, no, it is loving to call sin wrong. Notice our scripture says here, let us love in word, not in word and speech, but in action and in truth. God does not say, let us love sin, let us love the truth. And I think God lovingly calls us to stand up for that which is right and holy and righteous. But look with us, verse 17. If anyone has these world's the goods, sees a fellow believer in need but withholds compassion from him how does God's love reside in him scripture here in verse 17 is talking about an individual doesn't live out their life showing love to others and look at the question that scripture asks us how does God's love reside in him let me paraphrase that for believers who are not living out the missionary call of meeting needs and sharing the gospel scripture is saying what's wrong with you What's wrong? It's not natural. It's not normal. It's not what God has has given us life to do. This is not the normal life of a believer. See, Scripture says, um, verse 17, if anyone has these world's goods, it doesn't mean you have to be super rich. It means like if you have anything, if you have time, if you have resources, if you have have spiritual gifts, if you have giftings, if, if you see a need, the truth is, there are a lot of needs around us. I think even those on our pew are, are needs. I think everyone we meet is either in need of King Jesus as Savior or they're in need of encouragement. 
if you see a need, if, if you have these world's goods, but withhold compassion from others, how does God's love reside in him? What's wrong with that? The in New American Standard says, uh, my translation says, withholds compassion from him. The NASB says, closes his heart. The New King James says, shuts up his heart from him. And the King James Version says, shuts up his bowels of compassion. Sounds like a bathroom problem to me. But it's really a love problem, right? It's a love problem. If we see needs around us, if we can meet needs and we do nothing, what's wrong with that? See, I love, one of the parts I love about being a member here at Maisel is that I love how God is using us to show his love to a lost and dying world. Can you say amen to that? I mean, the church almost didn't have enough time for all the videos to talk about all the ministries today. Isn't that cool? I don't know about you, but I don't want to miss a Sunday. It feels like every Sunday we're hearing about someone else coming to know Christ. Five people came to know Christ through a funeral. That's pretty cool. Woohoo! Right? I, I heard this morning that um, one of the members here, uh, one of our members is getting to uh, do a Bible study on a college campus at a fraternity house. That's pretty cool. Um, I, I don't know if you, I may be the only one under 70 that still reads the Jackson Herald. <laughs> Any of y'all else read the Jackson Herald? Look at all these pictures about Maysville Baptist donates sneakers for students. That's pretty cool. I love going to hear about um, at the, on Wednesday nights with the men, hearing after the well game dinner, how God had used as people bought tickets and invested in the lives of others. Story after story of life change. Man, I love hearing about the family advocacy ministry. That is a fantastic ministry where you can love on others and help meet real needs. I love the clothes closet here. I love the feeding ministry here. I love that this church is planting churches. I love the Annie Armstrong Easter offering. We exceeded it. And I just want to say, man, it is cool to see this church meet needs and share the gospel. Can you say amen to that? And I want to remind you that no act of love is insignificant when King Jesus is involved in it. Some of you might think, well, all I did was cook a meal. All I did was say a kind word. All I did was help my neighbors move. All I did was spend a little time to hear her story. I didn't do much, but God uses that. Let me show you this next picture. We pull that next picture up for me? I want to show you the picture. It'd be on, on the left there. Uh, that's a Maysville hat. Um, that's one of the members here that came to Augusta. Uh, they was working at National Hills Baptist Church. National Hills is literally a mile and a half from some golf course in Augusta, Augusta National. And um, National Hills, um, before February, was a church that had really got depressed, wasn't doing much to reach its community. It was a church that had dwindled down to about 60. Church members, y'all did several projects in Augusta, and some of y'all did flooring here at National Hills. You replaced they took out uh, pews that literally, if you sat in the pews, your knees came to about your eye level. They were horrible. We took out pews. They got new chairs. They got new backdrop. They got new flooring in the welcome area. Another church helped them invest in their school. They built benches, and, and they built planters. They, they flipped teachers' lounges. Another church helped them go out and give out burgers and share the gospel. And, and you encouraged a local church. Some members said, hey, you know what? Hey, I think 55 of you said, hey, I can give of my time. I can give a, a Friday and a Saturday. I can meet some needs. I don't want you to know God used that. Ever since that happened in February, that church has been running not 60 anymore. That church has got energy to reach their community and now is running 80. And on Easter Sunday, I got a note from Pastor Kevin. They ran a new high and, and uh, 120 people came. They filled up every chair. Look at how God uses. I, all I did was help. No, but God used that. Um, the, the other picture is Pastor Larry Thacker. Uh, Larry is pastor of Bartimaeus Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas. Larry is legally blind. Uh, his wife is in a wheelchair. Bartimaeus Baptist Church is a church for people with disabilities to feel welcome and, and, and to just a place they call home. Every Sunday, Larry takes the praise music and the songs and puts it in Braille 
for others to be able to see what the to see in the words and follow along. I guess not see. Blind people don't see. Um, but you're with me. I did go to commerce. Um, he puts it in Braille every Sunday. I joke with Larry. I said, so you're kind of like the blind leading the blind. I don't know if that's politically correct or not. Larry confessed to us that we, he had not done an outreach in at least 15 years. But God had convicted him that they need to be a church for their community. And so he said, let's do an outreach. Okay, Larry, let's, let's do an outreach. And so literally um, just last month in March, the outreach was he had a sign that said meet and greet, spelled like the way you think it shouldn't be spelled, M-E-A-T and greet. And it, they had get hamburgers, but they passed out flyers. Two churches came and helped them. And 60 people showed up. Larry was ecstatic. Five people came to know Christ. And here's what I love is a church that says, you know what? I think God could use me somehow to meet needs. I think God could use me somehow just to show simple acts of love, and I think God can use it. The, the truth is, no act of love is insignificant when King Jesus... I think sometimes we try to overcomplicate it. I think sometimes it's just Jesus asks us just to be intentional, just to, just to go buy a lunch, just to send a card, to, to cook a meal, to take an extra shift so someone else can go on vacation, to cut someone's grass, to give a listening ear, to say a kind word, to think about someone else. What I see in Scripture is that the, the work of compassion is not optional, but that it's something that God calls us to give our lives to and that God uses it. But, but why should you and I live out the missionary call? Why should I, you and I give our lives to, to showing the love of Jesus and sharing the gospel? Why should we take God's purpose so seriously? And the reason is, is because we have a Savior who has shown great love to us. I think this world is so confused about what love is. I think our world thinks love is just a feeling. But that's not love. We take Pepto-Bismol for feelings. Love is a decision. Love is an action. Look with me what love is. Verse 16. This is how we know we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. You want to know love? You want to experience love? You want to see love? Look in the life of Jesus. This is how we have come to know love. He laid down his life for us. See, I firmly believe it wasn't the Romans who took Jesus, but he willingly surrendered himself. He substituted himself. He took our place on the cross. And as he atoned for our sins, we see the greatest demonstration of love. The Romans made have put Jesus on the cross, but I believe in a big God and a big Savior, and at any time Jesus could have called time out and, it took and got off the cross. I believe that it was the love that Jesus has for you and me. And let's, let's just marinate on that a sec. That he would love us like he does. That the king of the universe, the God of creation, the one who was there with God that helped speak creation to existence, the one who spoke to the wind and the waves, be still, and they were still. That Jesus loves us enough to die for rotten us and our sins. Woohoo! You don't have to, does he love me? Does he love me not? You don't have to wonder. He loves you. 1 John 3, 1, John writes almost, he can't contain the thought that God would love him. He writes, um, little children, what manner of love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. Can you think about it, that he would love us enough that he would die so that we could be saved? I mean, the gospel is Great news, may we never be saved so, so long that we forgot what good news it is that King Jesus has forgiven us of our sins and saved us. The truth is that if anyone will turn from their sins, cry out, oh Lord Jesus, forgive me. Oh Lord Jesus, save me. God will save anyone 
You mean that God could save me? Yes. God can save anyone. But God proves his own love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Loving God calls us to turn to him. And when you receive Christ, when you get saved, I love how verse 14 describes it. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. Notice that verse 14, I love that, that word for, notice how it describes, we got saved. King Jesus changed my life. King Jesus forgave me of my sins. Scripture says we passed from death to life. Woohoo! Any of you happy that God saved you and you passed from death to life? But notice what our text says. It is not saying that you earn salvation by loving others. It is not saying that you earn a better house in heaven by loving others. But notice what it is saying, verse 14. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers and sisters. Notice scripture is saying, for as we live out our missionary call, as we meet needs, as we, as we love on foster families, as we love on school kids, as we serve in the nursery, as we serve in security, as we are kind to our in-laws, it is a demonstration that Jesus has saved our hearts. See, our missionary calling, living it out, um, is evidence that God has changed us. I've heard it said another way, the birthmark of a Christian is love. How do you know that God has changed your life? You see God changing you where you love things you used to not love. And you love people that you used to not love because he's loved you. It's so living out our missionary calling by meeting needs and, cha and, and changing lives and sharing the gospel. It's a demonstration that, that God has saved you. It's it is our missionary call, but I want to see one last thing, is that we have a mission's mandate to live love. Again, we're working up the text from the bottom to the top, so let's, let's start at the top here this time. Notice what the text says, verse 11. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another. Notice what text says, we should love one another. Six times in our text this morning, we see this mandate that we have from the Lord, we should love one another. 26 times we see this idea of loving others in 1 John. If 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter, I present to you, 1 John is the love book. And God says this idea of loving others, you've heard from the very beginning. This idea of loving others, Others, we see it's in the very nature of God. God is love. He defines love. He demonstrates love. And he loves you. Throughout Scripture, Leviticus 19, he calls us to love our neighbors. Jesus says in John 13, verse 34, I give you a new command. Love one another. Just as I have loved you, you are to also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. We see that throughout Scripture. We see it here either in 1 John. 1 John 4, 7. Dear friends, let us love one another. 1 John 4, 4 11, Dear friends, if God loved us in this way, we also must love one another. Can I be honest with you? Loving others is hard. It's messy. It's complicated. Sometimes loving others, you get hurt. You ever been hurt by others? And yet God calls us to love others anyways. I've heard it said that some people have a face only a mother can love. But some people have an attitude, a tone, Words, I'm not, even a, I'm not even sure a mother can love. And yet God causes us to love them anyways. 
because he's loved us. Even in our text, there's a clear contrast between lovers and haters, between those who, who are after the example of Jesus and those that are after the example of the devil. And we, and we look at the life of Cain, who let hatred and jealousy move him to evil actions. And Scripture says that Cain follows the, the deeds of an evil one. Man, I don't want to follow the, the, the example of Satan. Oh, our example to pursue the example of Jesus. And we see throughout Scripture, and we see it in our text today, that the continual habit of a believer's life is that we are to demonstrate his love toward others. We are to love one another with no exceptions, with no strings attached, with no excuses. It's not to love people who love you, not to love people who are good to your family, but to love others. Now, our text specifically has in mind believers, but I think the broader context is how we treat anyone. Sometimes it's cooking a meal for someone who just had surgery. Sometimes it's decorating for vacation Bible school or serving in the nursery. Sometimes it's being friends with her even though she gets on your nerves. Sometimes it's sharing your testimony. Sometimes it's cutting grass. Sometimes it's taking a coworker out to lunch and just listening and sharing how God has changed your life. So one of the things I love about being a member at Maysville is I believe this is a church that truly is loving God and loving others and serving the world. I believe that God is using this church in many, many ways. And we can celebrate that today. We can, we can be proud of that today in a, in a holy sort of way. But the reality is, it's so easy when we're at a church where God's working so well is to think, woohoo, our church does that. Woohoo, he does that. Woohoo, she does that. Go, Tori. And neglect the fact that it's our call as well. Amen. See, the missionary call is not just for the super elite, the missionary call is for all believers. God doesn't want any believer to sit on the sidelines and soak. God wants us all to show how he's changed our lives, to care for others. What does it look like for you to fulfill God's call? To love not just in words, but in deeds. To see the needs of others and, and, and to meet those needs. What does it look like? Are you with me still, church? I'll give you two things and I close. One is this. Ask the Lord to help you slow down and see needs this week. I have a hard time seeing needs when I'm in a hurry. Man, you put me at Walmart, I want to lose my salvation sometimes. I know you can't. I mean, you put me at Walmart, I just want to get out of here as quick as possible. Don't talk to me. Or you put me on the road sometimes, I just want to drive as fast as I can. Or even at church sometimes. We can be like, all right, we got to go. And yet sometimes I believe that often when we're in a hurry and we have our face stuck in our phones, we miss the needs of others around us. Would you ask the Lord to, and pray a big prayer this week? Lord, would you just help me to slow down and see the needs of others around me? Is that a prayer you think you could pray? Lord, would you just help me to slow down and see the needs of others around me. And then second, I want to ask you to do this. Will you commit to meeting a need in Jesus' name this week? We, we see here in our text here that, that love has an impact. Love melts hearts. Love removes objections. It reflects Jesus. It provides an open door to answer the question, how can I be saved? And what if we were put on planet Earth not just to bide our time in comfort, but I believe that God has put us here to point others to Jesus. So would you, after you pray, Lord, will you help me to, to just see needs around me? Will you just commit, hey, Lord, hey, I'm going to ask you to help me to see needs, and Lord, I already say yes, Lord, I'm going to commit. But I want you to use me to meet a need. Maybe this, maybe this week, God will call you to go, cut your neighbor's grass. I don't cut his flowers, but maybe God will call you to go cut the neighbor's grass. Maybe God will call you to pause and listen to a co-worker. Maybe God will call you to be part of the, the fam ministry here. 
But will you just go ahead, and, Lord, when you show me a need, Lord, will you, will you, will you go ahead and commit? Lord, I, don't, I, I want to show your crazy love to someone this week. See, I, I believe that loving God and loving others is a major part of the life of a believer. Some would say it's key. It's, it's very clear in Scripture. And that God desires to use you to fulfill his missionary calling to meet needs and share the gospel. I, I get to work with lots of missionaries, and I, I, I'm moved by hearing Matt in an Indian reservation in South Dakota as he cares for others there. I'm moved by hearing about Larry who led his church from the suburbs to the inner city in Philly or, or, or John as he meet, cares for refugees in Boston or Alex living in the French Quarter or, or Jay in Valdosta with a respite camp. And all those guys, it's moving to hear their stories as missionaries. God's using them. And because of your generous giving to cooperative program and Andy Armstrong Easter offering, you're part of those missionaries meeting needs and sharing the gospel. And maybe God's calling one of us to go and live a life somewhere in the far country, in the inner city, or in the nations. And if God is calling you to do that, I want to encourage you to, to listen to that call, to answer that call, and surrender to his call for your life. But maybe God wants to have a missionary at Banks County High School, and that's why he put you there. Maybe God wants to have a missionary on North Elm Street, and that's why your house is there. Maybe God wants to have a missionary to the Smith family, and that's why you are part of that family. Maybe God wants a missionary at Kubota, and that's why you have a job there. Will you let God use you? What if what we've seen God do here at Maysville in the past few months is a tip of the iceberg of how God wants to use us. With every member saying, God, I firmly believe now after you've saved me that you've called me to meet needs, to show your love, to share the gospel. Lord, here am I, use me. Will you surrender to his missionary call for your life? Lord, here am I, use me. Let's pray together. Would you bow your heads and pray? I just want to ask you, if you want God to use you to fulfill his call for your life, to love others, to share the gospel, will you just right now just pray, Lord, here am I. Lord, use me. Sounds like the Lord's speaking to us all through our phones right now. Lord, here am I, use me. Would that be your prayer? Maybe this morning you just want to ask the Lord, Lord, will you help me to see the needs of those around me? Lord, will you help me to see needs? Will you pray that right now? Right now, would you pray, Lord, and commit to the Lord? Lord, as you show me needs, Lord, I go ahead and commit to you, Lord. Here am I, Lord, I want you to use me. Lord, help me be courageous to show your love to someone this week. Lord, would you use me? God, would you give me an opportunity to share my faith this week? Lord, would you use me? Maybe as we pray, God has spoken to your heart about your need to be saved. Maybe as you're reminded about God's great love for you, maybe you've only thought that God could never love you, and yet he does. That you could never be saved, yet you can. Maybe today you want to Join with others who've been saved this week and just cry out, Oh, Lord Jesus, will you forgive me of my sins? Will you come into my life and save me? Will you be master of my life? Friends, if you'll turn to the Lord Jesus and ask him to save you, he will. You can be saved right now. Lord, I ask, Lord, right now in this time that you would move, you would help us to respond to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Friends, we come to the most important time of the service, the invitation time. This invitation time is, is for us to respond as God has spoken to our hearts. How would God be honored for you to respond to him today? Maybe you want, want to continue the prayer time you've had and just come at the altar and pray, Lord, I, I believe that you want to use me. Lord, will you get, show me needs? Lord, will you help me to be a missionary where you've placed me? Maybe God is calling you to, to be a missionary in the far corners of the earth. Or maybe God's calling you to be a preacher boy. So I'd love for you to come make that public and just tell Pastor Shane, Pastor Shane, I believe God's calling me to be a, 
overseas missionary. Maybe today you want to pray for someone's salvation. If so, the altar is open. Maybe you want King Jesus to save you. If so, we'd love to have you come and walk down the aisle and say, Pastor Shane, I want to be saved. As God moves, will you move? We stand together and sing, you come, you honor the Lord. Jesus died is a shelter in which we can hide, and its grace so free is sufficient for me, and deep is its fountain as wide as the sea. Brother Sammy, and I know everybody's phones went off right when we were going into invitation. I got something to say about that. When your phones went off, you were asked to be on the lookout for Annie. She's 23 years old. She's my neighbor. She's autistic and she's missing. So I want to ask, we need to pray that Annie gets found we need to pray for her so I want to open up the altars here if you're willing to come and pray and let's just put this thing to practice let's let's pray for others will you come help me pray for my neighbor Annie that she'll be found autistic 23 year old girl we all got the message and here we are in church at a time of prayer and altar call let's pray that Annie will be found as a church, let's pray for her uh, this morning. And you can pray right where you are. If you can't make it to the altar, we understand. We understand. you you just right there. Would you please join us as we pray that Annie will be found this, this morning. Heavenly Father, in the name and through the blood of Jesus, Lord, we come to you today with concerned hearts. Lord, we heard, just heard this message on being a missionary and having a missionary call. And Lord, right now you've called us to be prayer missionaries. And Lord, as we entered into this time of altar call and invitation, Lord, those of us that have cell phones and the alerts are on, receive that one of our own here in Jackson County, Miss Annie, is missing. So Heavenly Father, I pray that you would help her to be found. Lord, I pray that you'd be with the Jackson County Sheriff's Office as well as others, her family. Lord, we pray for them as they hunt for her. Lord, I pray that they'd know that there's a church that's praying for them. And God, we pray that she would be found. Lord, we thank you that we have this time together. And Lord, we're just asking for you to, to move and to help during this time of need. Lord, we love you. We're grateful, Lord, that we can pray as a church for those needs in our community and in our county. And Lord, right now, we've been confronted with one. and We pray that you would help in this time. We love you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Thank you, church. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for praying. Well, God bless you. We return to our regularly scheduled Wednesday, night, Wednesday nights events coming up this week. And so I'm looking forward to seeing you on Wednesday nights. Men's ministry, women's ministry, open Bible study right here. We're going through the Old Testament, Old Testament survey on Wednesday nights in our open Bible study. All the events begin at 630. God bless you for being here. Thank you, Pastor Sammy. Could we thank Pastor Sammy as we leave today? God bless you. Have a great day. And we'll see you Wednesday night.